Hey and welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a review of Bunny by Mona Awad. This was a trip. So this one, I am going to do a spoiler free section here at the beginning and then if you want to hear my spoiler -free thoughts, stick around and I will warn you before we get into spoilers. But first, without spoilers, I'm going to explain what this book is about and tell you what I liked about it and what I didn't like about it. So Bunny is a contemporary fiction, slightly horror, and it takes place at university. So we follow Samantha who is a scholarship student at this university. She is in a writing fiction major and essentially all of her major or her like what she's focusing on is this other group of girls. They're the only group, only other people in her cohort and they are the bunnies. They're very over the top. They call each other bunny and they kind of stick to themselves. They're kind of like a cult. And she despises them until one day they invite her to one of their get-togethers and she decides to ditch her only friend, Ava, and go to one of these get-togethers. And after that, this sort of weird relationship, friendship happens between Samantha and the bunnies over time and everything kind of spirals from there. So, what I really like about this book one, okay, I like this and I dislike it. It's a freaking trip, okay? At parts, it feels like you're hallucinating, but in like a good way. So it's kind of crazy and out there, but like I also love that about this book. Um, I think it makes a lot of commentary on academia and um, that sort of thing, it, since it is set in university. And the bunnies are just interesting. They're scary, they're terrifying, they're very creepy, but it's so interesting to get the inside glimpse of the bunnies. I read this book so quick. This is one that once you get into it, you're not going to be able to put it down. It, it becomes fast paced very quickly. Things just start happening and they don't stop happening and you're confused, but you're also not confused. All at the same time <laughs> but it's such a fun experience I know that this is a book you are either gonna love or you're gonna hate it there's not really an in-between um, with most people I ended up rating it 3.5 stars because when I first finished this I was like I'm confused I don't know I don't understand but then the more you think about it the more you like it so like as soon as I finished this book I ended up going to Reddit and once I started reading everyone's thoughts on Reddit I liked this book even more especially when their thoughts were like validating how I felt about certain things in this book. Um, so it's very interesting. Know that there are things that happen that are just a little bit out there, a little bit wild, a little bit fantastical <laughs> and you're just, you just have to go, you have to roll with the punches, okay? go with the flow and just let the story take you and then at the end just go go hard figuring out what you just read because when I finished it I was like I'm pretty sure I know what happened like I think I understand it but I'm not sure if I do so let me, let me go confirm my feelings with other people and that's what I did and after that I was like okay cool I actually kind of enjoyed this book. The things that I didn't like or that I was confused, which is something I also kind of liked. There's just some things, and I guess it's kind of an open ending almost. Not an open ending, but it's up for interpretation. Um, this, this whole book is up to your interpretation, essentially. And sometimes I love that, but sometimes I hate it. And I was kind of frustrated at the end of this because I really just wanted an explanation, and it doesn't give you much of one. It explains some things, but overall, you're still very confused when you finish this book. It's honestly got some pretty gruesome um, scenes. So if you don't like gruesome, maybe don't read this book because it gets pretty graphic pretty fast. Uh, like gory. Yeah, so if you don't like that, don't pick this up. But if you're into that kind of thing, definitely do. I think maybe if I reread it, I would, I would understand a little bit better. I do think that this is a plot that is very entertaining and 
it's something that I feel like I would have to reread this book and really analyze it to fully get the whole experience. So I think that maybe later on the line I would I would revisit this. It is very short. It is only it's not even 300 pages so it was a very quick read. So quick reads are always a good thing for me especially when I, I picked this up in between um, books in the Mortal Instruments series and it was a nice little break but also I felt like I was going insane. I can't really say much else about this without going into spoilers so at this point I'm going to start talking about spoilers. If you haven't read it go read it and then you can come back and watch this part of the video um, or if you don't want to read it and you just want to know stick around. Okay, so starting off, the bunnies. It's the way she calls them like creepy doll <laughs> and things like that for me. Like it literally, I like to think was that they were creepy. They are truly horrifying. And the first couple times she hangs out with them, I'm like this is just so suspicious and weird. And then before you know it, she's literally in a cult. The first time that they did the bunny ritual, I was like, what the heck am I reading? Because they kill the bunny and then a boy appears. But they're not normal boys. That one just screams and they have to murder him. And they explain, sometimes we have to kill them. It's fine. Is it though? We'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> About what really all of this kind of means. Then, it just gets, and it was weird because... I was just like, what is happening? Also, when she really gets sucked into it and they kind of have a hive mind. They all call each other bunny. You never know who they're referring to during that little section. It was like, you are calling each other bunny, but I don't know which one of you you're talking to. And they all just like know where each other are, are and they need to know where they are and they need to be together all the time. And it's just like, oh my gosh, literally why? Why are you so obsessed with each other? So here's the thing. You realize that they're doing this thing where when they, you know, kill the bunnies, they're bringing them back as boys. So when they recruit Samantha, after you've read this, it's very clear they already knew that she had this ability, but she did not know that she had this ability. When she attempts to bring a bunny boy <laughs> to life, a bunny boy to life, it doesn't work. Because she accidentally brings a stag to life. And this does not act this boy does not act the way that the bunny boys do where they are loyal and they want to please you he becomes infatuated with her best friend and when he realizes that she's kind of snapping out of this cult trance he decides to ruin the bunnies for her he ruins their lives he's trying to help her he doesn't want to be with her whereas the bunnies um boys that they're creating like want to be with them romantically then you find out that her best friend Ava this whole time is not real. She was a swan and Samantha was so lonely that she didn't know she did it but she made the swan become her best friend. And her creations worked pretty well whereas with the bunnies theirs were not working very well. They were turning out like disfigured and things like that and that's why the bunnies brought her in in the first place. The question is, and most of this book I was like, mm, she's schizophrenic. This is like, I'm still kind of convinced she might be schizophrenic. And that's where it's up for debate. Because I feel that when they're doing their um, little meetings and they're the bunny, she's with the bunnies and they're creating these people, I think they're just creating characters in their head for their writing. And she in her head is making it into something that it's not. And she made up Ava and she made up, but then it doesn't explain how, if she's schizophrenic it doesn't explain how everyone sees these other people really because there is a point when one of the bunnies does talk to Ava and they see her. Other times it's like she's not there, she's never around and so it's realistic to believe that maybe she's making this all up in her head. What gets me is the end of this freaking book, okay? So she has a boy named Jonah who is kind of her friend, but she also just blows him off all the time. Um, it's hard to determine whether or not he's real. And that is what threw me about this book is, is Jonah real? And that's what I really am here to talk about because I need someone to tell me whether or not he's real. 
because he does go to the Thanksgiving at their professor's house and he talks to the professor so if he wasn't real he couldn't have talked to the professor but he still could have been a made made person if we believe that they can make these um people because after Ava dies her stag is dead all of it's gone um and it's just her she graduates she's no longer part of anything with the bunnies the bunnies have like lost it because they are like torn to shreds by her um boy that she created i can't remember if he's a stag or if he was a wolf i think he was the stag though but jonah sees her she's sad she's where she was when she saw the swan that becomes ava and he comes and talks to her and he asks her what she's doing tonight and she says you know probably just heading home sit on the roof and celebrate with the raccoon priests and she has this weird moment thinking about ava and she says, you could come with me if you want to Jonah. And then it says, I lower my gaze to the mud. Sure, Samantha says the mud. I'd love to. It doesn't say, sure, Samantha, Jonah said. It says the mud says. So now it's just confusing to me because that makes me think Jonah's not real. And I don't understand. Is he real? Is anything real? Was this just her making it all up in her head and she's kind of crazy and the bunnies were just creating these fictional characters in their writing workshops or can they actually make people and Joan is just another made person or like what is happening <laughs> because I still don't understand someone explain to me like what is happening in this book what happened I don't I don't know what's real so yeah most of this book I just thought she was insane but overall, I gave it 3.5 stars. I did actually really enjoy this book and I love that I'm still confused. Like I just, it's one of those things that you keep th thinking about it. It sits with you because you just want to understand. And even after Reddit, I still don't understand. So I would love to hear your thoughts and your opinions on this book. That's really what I'm here for. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.